Welcome back. Be sure to hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty if you feel so inclined. At IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co, at J Wayne's World. We just got done talking about the Panthers. Let's uh, let's kind of keep it with the Panther theme. The guy they traded away last year, Kelvin Benjamin. We're gonna take it over to the Bills side. I thought Kelvin Benjamin looked borderline uncoverable in this game, right? Yeah, I mean it's. I- some of it could be attributed to uh, Seymour, the guy who was Seymour covering him for butts. a reasonable amount of the, the game here. Anybody who was being covered by him, he was just getting dusted off, who is a, a former Buffalo Bill. Uh, but he, he couldn't cover anybody. But Benjamin, I mean, if this is what's going to happen, I mean, you, have, you saw the clips before the game of Cam and uh, Calvin Benjamin having a meetup in, in, in the uh, middle of the field there and Calvin looking like he wanted no part of whatever Cam Newton was saying, and Cam Newton's kind of got that aggressive stance with his hand behind his back, like I'm not going to hit you, but my because my hands are high on my back. <laughs> yeah, Calvin Benjamin was <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, we're good. I said my piece. Yeah, but I mean, if <laughs> if he's going to play like that, he should pop off at the mouth more often. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the first drive he looked great, Benjamin. Had, I think, four total targets on the first drive, two hitches, and then the sideline catch on the broken play, uh, coming back to the quarterback on the scramble there. And then the TD where, uh, again, it was up. Seymour was up in press man and just got bodied and burnt by uh, Kelvin Benjamin. Seymour did trip up a little bit on that route, but still got touched up. Had no business being up in press man. Sure. Yo, and, uh, Kelvin had no ben- business jumping into the stands. He almost took that lady out. That old, old lady, lady I could not believe she did not get crushed in half. She was just smiling. She, she was. Feel it. She don't perk us in. She must know him. She didn't know. That was crazy. He did dive up in her lap, but it, like Casey said, I mean, Benjamin looked good. Um, he looked big and healthy. I, is it, are you, did he look better or was the quarterback delivering accurate balls more surprising? Like oh well Nathan Nathan George Peterman looked freaking awesome yeah. for sure. Was all the QBs for the Bills look look pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, I think as a whole, I think the offense for the Bills, I think they, they had to leave this game being excited with the idea that they got they got passes that can be catch called catch, catchable passes to be thrown, which is was very questionable going into the first preseason game. Uh I think it's cool that Peterman came out there and looked a lot better than he did the only time we've ever seen him in another NFL game. I mean, obviously, his last preseason, but he went out there, threw five interceptions or whatever in the first half, and the whole tie rod. On the road versus Chargers. Right. Well, yeah, it was a bad spot. It was a terrible idea. And, you know, just, just to pull tie rod, just incredible – horrible situation for Peterman to be in and then he's had to live with that for months and months and months and so it's cool for him to get out there and, and look decent I thought that was cool for him to get a, a, a little chance to redeem himself yeah I, th- I thought he did that for sure he was throwing dimes and then in this, the first incompletion he threw was right through his own guy's hands tipped in the air for an interception like it's a brutal game yeah the game of football but yeah it looked like the Bills offense could move the ball you throw shady in there on top of all that and it's like dang they could they could be decent. We were, everyone's burying them already. Like they didn't make the playoffs. We just talked about this last week. But I mean, back to Kelvin Benjamin. I think I think this guy's turning out to be a steal in 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 your in your startups and probably in redraft as well. Like he's he's a late guy, and I think he's someone that could definitely return more on your investment. Yeah, I mean, when you, you came out there and you just saw the immediate volume going over to Kelvin Benjamin's side. Obviously, Corey Coleman's not on the field yet. He's their new acquisition and. Zay Jones is, is still I think he's maybe back at practice but he's way behind and that you know who else do they have you saw Rod Streeter make a nice uh touchdown grab and a nice chuck from from Peterman there but that got called back I mean, to me it's basically shaping up like I mean like you said the Benjamin ADP right now is going to be is solid and it's probably going to be a really nice return on your investment if Benjamin can stay healthy again I don't love Benjamin as a player but it's basically going to be Benjamin Shady and, and Charles Clay yeah. just getting pummeled with volume, you know, yeah. in, in this offense. And maybe Corey Coleman can come and contribute, and maybe you could see something from Zay Jones. Yeah. Um, and I don't doubt that Corey Coleman can contribute, but you know, right now it's just you know you, you're probably going to have to double coverage Kelvin Benjamin, I guess, and and you know I don't know what else you could do. 
Well, it'll be interesting if he's getting the targets. Like, you and know. I don't think there's a you know. I think he's. I think that's the biggest. T- I think he's gonna be getting the targets. Sure, and that's the thing. You know, if there's if evident. there's if there's able bodies out there, obviously, like you said, the other two, the next two guys in line weren't out there. So if you get if you give me the Bills offense, and if you give me Shady on the field, and you give me Zay Jones and Corey Coleman on the field, and without obviously Shady is the most proven player on the team, but without necessarily proving much from the other guys, maybe the defenses are like, all right, let's try to stop Shady for a minute and, you know, put our best defenders on Benjamin, see what happens. Maybe the offense has to go away from Benjamin for a game or two to make the defense get honest. Maybe not. But if the either way, if he's getting eight to ten targets a game and right. you're getting him in the eighth to the tenth round, you can't beat that. That right. it, that is the that is R-O-I. the definition. I, I that is the definition of return. You're gonna on investment. you're gonna see him. I mean, if he has any more, uh, you're, this is already probably has bumped him a little bit Got in to. people's yeah. minds. No doubt. And no doubt. You're pro- probably going to continue to see this kind of volume coming his way in the preseason for as long as the. Uh, Bills want to put him out there, um, and then you you know you will get Corey Coleman coming in there who can be a field stretcher, and you know I think I think he, Corey Coleman can do a little bit of everything. Can't for guard you. that comeback route, right? Um, so I just you know it'd be interesting to see who the starter ends up being for the Buffalo Bills, but I don't think this offensive line is going to be as bad as we thought it was going to be. Uh, I think we we talked about that last week, and I think mccarron or peterman can come in here and, and probably get some starts for this key, this team and at least make be a, not be an embarrassment like everybody thinks they're going to be especially with shady being out there and you know having the focal point of everybody else if benjamin can be your number one guy and be a true number one like we he's he's been well my last thing on benjamin like we said last week was the targets that he got after getting the trade yeah. When he came over to the Bills, they fed him the ball. So if we go back into this year, you know, we go go into this year here, and he's still, I, like you said, there's no reason to believe at this point that the targets aren't going to be his. And if that's the case, he's got to be on your draft board, even if you don't like him. You you can either like oh, him yeah, or love I mean, him or hate him or all the all of the above. But it's not, you know, you got to do. It's a business decision, right? right? I, don't, I don't necessarily love him, like I said multiple times. But I mean, where you can get him, and I mean, even even in the next nine eighth round even still like even if it's not the 10th or 11th even if it gets up into like the eighth round or whatever like that could be a a solid wide receiver like with all that volume it's an easy wide receiver too absolutely i mean you have red zone upside and all these you know you're thinking double digit touchdowns and i was a big fan of benjamin right after he you know spent a first year on the panthers because obviously i'm in south carolina i want to have a reason to pull for the panthers he's a rookie he showed off he crushed as a rookie and he had you know it it basically hasn't necessarily been the healthiest when he, guy when he's not been hurt he's been really really good so i mean i'm not it's not that i don't like benjamin at all he's just had some ups and downs with injuries oh, yeah. it's and, not that and, i don't like him i just don't i'm not a guy yeah. who's out there and loving let's put it like this when you trade teams and you go to the bills you normally don't get a lot you don't get more love mm-hmm. you know so it's not like we see benjamin in the bills uniform and we're like oh my god that ain't how you yes. that, that ain't how this works right <sighs> You don't think that. Yeah. I am right but now, though. Exactly. Because the ADP is great. Exactly. And, and the volume's there. That's and it. And the TD upside's there. And That's it. Absolutely. 